Hey guys, it's me. Just a small disclaimer before we begin. I just wanted to let you guys know that <laughs> I've been binging a lot of Onyx Pages videos and Jerry over at Onyx Pages for those that are unfamiliar. And because of that, it seems that I have picked up a little bit of her cadence, her Canadian cadence and accent. <sighs> it's just a consequence of being an actress. You guys will notice I pick up accents very quickly. So if I'm watching a movie or I'm binging someone's videos and let's say they're from the UK or from Canada, like in this instance, it's very easy for me to pick up their cadence, their accent, their inflex, uh, excuse me, their inflections. So it's just it's just a consequence of being an actress. It's something I've dealt with my entire life, and it's what made it so easy for me to pick up the quote unquote American accent when my family came over here from Nigeria. So I just thought I would put in a small disclaimer in the beginning of this video because you guys will notice it and pick up on it on a lot of my words and just the ends of my phrases that Canadian cadence and slight accent is definitely there so I apologize for that but here's your disclaimer and go on to enjoy the video bye guys you guys the time has come for me to film my throwbackathon ton throwbackathon <laughs> TBR my Nigerian comes through you know with those T's ever now and again but um that sounded Jamaican hmm. identity crisis but anyways so I'm here to film my throwbackathon TBR. I'm super, super hype. I'm not gonna put any 90s music in this video because that was a struggle last time. Yeah, we won't go into it, I'm still scarred. But anyways, throwbackathon TBR, I'm here, I'm ready, and as always, I have several choices for each prompt because I'm so indecisive and I still don't know what I'm gonna pick and I've just made peace with that and you guys know I'm a mood reader so I gotta give myself options, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know what I'm actually gonna end up reading for this readathon, but we'll find out together. It's a journey, come with it, come with it, come with me on it, there we go. All right, so prompt number one is back at one and this one was to read a book from your favorite kid series, your favorite kid series excluding Harry Potter and the Percy Jackson series because I know how y'all like to do. If we could all just pick that, Where's the, where's the fun in that? Where, where's the fun? Where's the mystery? It's not there. So, I have a few options. Ignore the dogs because when you click on my face and you come to this channel, here we are. So, I have a few options for this. The first one is, <laughs> let me see if anyone else remembers this or if I'm just in that weird millennial generation where people don't remember the things that we remember, you know, but this book is Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. It was a thing. It was a series. There were these rats, okay, and they were like super, super brainiac rats, okay? Think Pinky and the Brain. Think Brain, except in more rats, like Brain as every rat, like super smart. They had their own society. They had been like experimented on in this lab and it made them super smart. So they had their own community and I don't exactly remember what was happening. It was like they were being threatened or something and they had to run for their lives. I don't know. I don't know. I was a kid. I have not read this series since, but I do remember that it was the first book was Mrs. Frisbee. I think I'm saying the name right and the Rats of Nim. And there was a little boy named Timothy, something like that, or a little rat boy. I don't know, y'all. I just. I'm, I'm just intrigued. I just remember this book had such a big impact on me, even though I can't remember the plot. And I want to go back and revisit it. And there were three books in the series, I believe. There was also The Secret of Nim. They made it into an animated film. Does anyone else remember this? Comment down below. Because I was talking to my coworkers today and they were just kind of like, that sounds familiar. I kind of remember that. I just, I need, I need people to validate, <laughs> to validate this choice. But that's my first choice. My second choice is a book that, ooh, stretch. <clears throat> I'm trying to read anyway, and I started listening to the audiobook a little bit, and then I stopped. Long story, but romance always distracts me from other books I'm trying to read. 
but this is Anne of Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery. This is one of my favorite, favorite series of all time, and I've been wanting to reread them recently, and I've kind of been collecting them in various editions and formats. So because of Hoopla, I got the audiobook. If you guys don't know about Hoopla, it's this amazing online library cloud system where you can get audiobooks, movies, and I think even music. And you just have to have, your library just has to be connected to them somehow. So check it out. It doesn't hurt to see if your library is connected and affiliated with them. Long story short, you can get audiobooks for free. Hello. But yeah, so I got the audiobook through Hoopla. And I, like I said, I started listening to it. And I got like a couple chapters in. And then I got distracted by a romance audiobook story of my life. So I want to revisit this. So this would be the perfect time. And I just love this series so much. So those are my two options for question number one. Oh my God, four minutes later, help. Prompt number two is Mo Money, Mo Problems. Read one of your favorite books that you bought from the Scholastic Book Fair. And honestly, I have my fifth grade teacher. It was actually my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Kanoy. So, so sorry, Mrs. Kanoy. And also so sorry, Mrs. Fannin. But it was my fourth grade teacher not my fifth grade teacher. Yikes. Don't know how I mixed those up. So sorry. Do I still remember her name? Miss Fannin. Mrs. Fannin! Shout out to you, Mrs. Fannin! Because in her classroom, she had adaptations of classics. And the adaptations were basically like way shortened illustrated versions of classics. And that's honestly how I got into classics as a kid. In her classroom, I would read these shortened, abridged, that's the word I'm looking for. Mm. I would read these abridged versions of the classics and fall in love with the story and then that would make me go seek out the actual real long full version and that's how I fell in love with Charles Dickens and Louisa May Alcott and Frances Hodgson Burnett and so many other classic authors you know because I was reading the abridged stories in Mrs. Fannin's classroom and looking at the illustrations and falling in love with the story and wanting to read the full-length novel. I say all that to say that I read The Little Women, abridged version, version, not virgin, different video, version <laughs> in her classroom in fifth grade. And that's what inspired me because it was like a month or two before the Scholastic Book Fair came. Little did you know there would be a story time in this video. Um, okay, back to the point. Um, that was like a month or two before the Scholastic Book Fair came to our school So I read the bridge version with all the illustrations and I was like, oh, I want to read the full length And then I went to Scholastic Book Fair and it was there and I just remember I will never forget the feeling I got when I saw it I cannot explain it's like I knew the story was gonna change my life and it did and to this day It is my favorite book of all time. I talk about it endlessly on this channel. You guys know I'm probably rolling your eyes right now and I still have my copy that I got at the Scholastic Book Fair, and it's falling apart. I will never get rid of it. My kids won't even be allowed to read this. Just They'll just be allowed to look at it, you know, from afar, like a couple feet back from the shelf, you know? I think that's okay, that's fair, you know? But yeah, Little Women. <laughs> I just, I can't, all the feels. All the feels! Ugh. And I've been wanting to reread, and I reread it at least once a year or once every other year. Well, I don't reread the whole book once every other once every year, but at least once a year I'll go to like my favorite parts, you know, and I'll reread those. Does anyone else do that? I won't read the whole book, but I'll just go to my favorite parts and I'll reread those. And I absolutely watch like I I like immerse myself in the story in some way every year and almost like every fall. Fall time is like my time. So I'll like either reread my favorite parts, reread the whole book, or I'll go watch any of the adaptations. There's so many to choose from. Oh my God! <sighs> These dogs. They don't care that I'm filming a video. They do not care. But um, I will go and like watch, you know, one of the films and just get back into the cozy, the feels, the joy, the nostalgia, like everything, all the emotions. I need to move on. Ooh, prompt number three, y'all. I have so many options for this, it's ridiculous. But it's always be my baby. Read a childhood book you still own for all the memories. You guys, where to even begin? 
So don't judge me, but I have all of my options here and it's obnoxious. It's obnoxious, I'm just gonna tell you. Whew, here we go. <clears throat> I've got The Giver by Lois Lowry. And yes, this is the original copy that I bought to read in the fifth grade. I still own it. I don't know why it's such in, it's still in such pristine condition. That's a little scary to me, but yes, The Giver. Here we go. Oh my God, you guys, I still have my name. Okay, these dogs are about to drive me crazy. Pause. Hey, 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 hey. It's Kwam Tiam. It's Kwam Tiam. Or you're going in the crate. Do we want to go to the crate or do we want to Kwam Tiam? That's what I thought. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Little one, sit down. Sit down. We haven't talked to you that yet, but sit down. Appreciate it. No, 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 no. You're gonna go in your crate. That's what I thought. <sighs> so sorry about that. So as you can see, that's my name. We had to write our names on our books in the, <clears throat> what do they call these? Part, not the binding, the, someone help me out. On this part of the book, so that we could tell like whose copy was whose. You guys, I still have my name written on here. I cannot. Okay, so that's option number one. <clears throat> Option number two is a book that literally destroyed my soul, but it's Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry but Mil by Mildred D. Taylor, and as you can see, it's falling apart. I don't have my name written on this one. Don't know why, but I still own this. Option number three, another book that is like the original, and this is Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm by Kate Douglas Wiggin. I cannot tell you how many times I reread this book as a kid. Probably like Oh my god, I was a huge rereader as a kid and I think it's because my parents, like, I, they took me to the bookstore but buying books was still a privilege and we util utilized the library a lot and we can always go. So I would just reread my books that I owned over and over and over again and I reread this book so many times. Another book that I is still like the original is Chasing Redbird by Sharon Creech. And I freaking was obsessed with Sharon Creech. I read her other book, Walk Two Moons, and fell in love with it. And I read that one for, for school or in school, I can't remember, I think it was for school. And then I, my parents bought me this one. And this one's also really weathered because this is another one that I reread over and over and over again. Oh my God, I, can rem I still remember all the Saturday mornings I spent reading this book. And then one where I had to purchase a new copy because the old copy got lost is Where the Lilies Bloom by <clears throat> Vera and Bill Cleaver. And I really, like, I remember this book having a big emotional impact on me. And then a book that really just, like, changed me is, and this is a new copy, is Matilda by Road Dahl. Pretty much all of Road Dahl's books, but I just remember Matilda sticking out, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, obviously, and The Witches were, like, the big three, but Matilda. <clears throat> so those are all my options I don't know which one I'll go with so you guys will just have to catch my reading vlogs and my wrapped up my wrap up to see which one I go with prompt number five is I will always love you and it's read a book that made you fall in love with reading and for that one I just have one choice and I honestly don't know if I'll get to it because it's so lengthy and in-depth and intricate and and that's great expectations by Charles Dickens this story just really showed me what reading could do and I, I can't explain it you guys I really can't it's it's either gonna be this one or Pride and Prejudice but Pride and Pride and Prejudice I'm using for the last prompt so I couldn't use it for this one but Great Expectations showed me what storytelling is capable of and it's like you know I loved all those like kids books that I used to read like all the Beverly Clear Cleary books um, that I read as a kid like the Sweet Valley High books Babysitter's Club, American Girl Dolls, Boxcar Children, Goosebumps, all those kids' books of my time, like Ramona Quimby, like Mr. Popper's Penguins, Island of the Blue Dolphins, like all those books, A Wrinkle in Time. But it wasn't until I really discovered Charles Dickens, and more specifically, it was, it was between Great Expectations and A Tale of Two Cities that really showed me what storytelling was capable of and the kind of, the kind of time that it could, could span and like the characters and the depth of the plot and the psychology, like it was just, it really blew my mind. And picture me reading this 
as like an 11 year old 10 11 12 year old and my dad would give me these books because my dad's an english professor so my dad would just give me books to read and he never limited me to like my age or like what i should be reading for my age like i read song of solomon at like 13 because my dad gave it to me and was like hey tony morrison is an author you should know here you go and that changed my life profoundly i read the great gatsby at 12. my dad would just give them to me and he wouldn't just be like oh she has to be this age he would just give them to me my dad also gave me harry potter shout out to my daddy but um so he handed me great expectations and i remember I would highlight, <clears throat> well not highlight, I would underline with a pencil all the words that I didn't understand and I would go to my dad and he got tired of me coming up to him so he gave me a dictionary and he was like, here, you can look it up yourself if you don't understand these words. And expanded my vocabulary. It just, this book, reading this book really stretched me and it just made me a more critical reader, a more emotional reader, emotionally intelligent reader. I don't know, this book, this book, this book always be my baby this book wrong prompt that was i was always i would always love you wasn't it i will always love you okay it, it can go it can be for both okay it can be it can be for both and last but not least prompt number six the boy is a mine read a book that made you fall in love with a fictional character this one is a no-brainer for me the first time i fell in, I fell in love with a fictional character Mr. Darcy in Pride and Prejudice. Am I basic? I'm basic, aren't I? <laughs> I just, I can't help it. I read Pride and Prejudice for the first time all around the same age, that fifth, sixth grade age. Another book, actually, my dad did not give me Pride and Prejudice. I'm trying to remember what happened. <clears throat> he took me to Barnes and Nobles and I went to the kids section and actually read Sense and Sensibility first. I remember this now. There was Sense and Sensibility and there was Pride and Prejudice and I picked Sense and Sensibility and read that first and then the next trip, or maybe it was on the same trip that I bought both, I can't remember. I also, then I read Pride and Prejudice and I just remember falling in love with the story. Okay, what's, what's with all the barking? That was a story that I also had to read with the dictionary next to me, but I just remember like I read Pride and Prejudice over and over and over and I just remember falling in love with Mr. Darcy and how he really influenced like my romantic like leanings for the rest of my life. Like that tall, dark, handsome, moody, broody, mysterious, mysterious misunderstood, snooty type of dude. Yeah, all my crushes. All my crushes after I read that book. It all makes sense now, <laughs> but that was the first fictional character I was ever like, ooh, Mr. Darcy, if it's William Darcy, I'm swooning, I'm swooning. But yeah, Pride and Prejudice. And I don't have a copy to show you because you guys are really gonna be shocked. I don't own a, a copy of Pride and Prejudice anymore. I don't know what happened. I feel like I loaned it to someone and they never gave it back, which is why I don't really loan books to people anymore. I just like buy them a copy and then ship it to their house. But yeah, so I ordered a copy. It should be arriving soon. It's like a special edition copy. But I also have it in e-reader form because little do, if you guys don't know, little did you know, or if you guys don't know, all of the classics are free on Kindle. So if you've never read a classic or you're curious, the majority of them are free on Kindle. So there you go. But yeah, I own an e-copy. And I've always wanted to listen to the audiobook. I heard that the audiobook is like amazing. So I may need to dip my toe in that because I've been really feeling audiobooks recently. But yep, that is my throwback at on TBR. Thanks for spending 20 minutes of your life with me. It's been lit. <laughs> or at least for me and these dogs, it's been lit. I don't know. You guys let me know. But I am done. I will catch you guys in my next video. Let me know what books you guys are reading for the Throwbackathon, if you'll be participating. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram because we're going to have daily prompts. I'm really excited for those. I need to get my life together so I can figure out which books I'm using for those. But yes, I'm hype. I can't believe it starts on Sunday. It seems like, it seems like this year is just... I'm not going to be that person right now. I will not. Okay, I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank <laughs> you.